Welcome to With You Every Step, the solo travel podcast that explores, explains, and hopefully inspires you to travel the world by yourself. I'm your host, Michelle Lee. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Come all ye faithful to with you every step. Yay! Woo-hoo! Welcome back to With You Every Step. Now, that's not the intro you're used to, but today (laughs) (laughs) we have... Troy Larkin back with us. I'm back again. I'm he... a step man. I'm stepping back in. Yeah, you are this stepping my, back in. My second foray into With You Every Step. I'm I... happy to be back. It's so exciting to have you back. So as you probably gathered, this is going to be a Christmas episode. So Merry Christmas to everybody all around the world. We are going to talk about some experiences that Troy and I have had with Christmas at home and around the world. And then we're going to talk about some really interesting things that we just discovered. There's some interesting Christmas traditions around the world. So if you find yourself traveling around the world, you're out and about, you find yourself, you look at the calendar, you go, holy smokes, it's Christmas. I'm in Croatia. What what do the Croatians do at Christmas? Or you're like, oh no, I'm in Spain. What do they do there? We're going to help you out because we've done the research. We found out what, what the Christmas traditions are around the world. Some of the best ones, some of the choicest ones, I think. I think so. I, we definitely are going to point you in the right direction when it comes to tradition. We're going to talk about what we do in Australia because for those that are in the Northern Hemisphere, it is cold. Yeah, things are a bit different down under. They really are. <laughs> it's a little bit different down here. You, know, you might not be used to it. No, it's hot. We're in Melbourne, it's... which means that we could have any kind of oh, weather. It could be anything, but generally it's stinking hot. Stinking hot here can be a 40 degree day, which is close to 100, I'm pretty 100, sure, 100 Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit there on, yeah. Yeah, and so it can be really hot. So it's very different for those that are used to white Christmases and the freezing cold. Mm. And being Australia, I've got a lot of friends from overseas who are here, and it gets to Christmas, especially people from the Northern Hemisphere, and they're like, what is going on? Why are we, have, why are we having a barbecue? Why, why are we going to the beach? I'm like... Obviously, it's so hot, but yeah, that's Australian Christmas. It is. But I do not celebrate Christmas that way. We don't have a barbecue. Do you have a barbecue for Christmas? My family Christmas tradition is Christmas Eve is a full cooked, like, hot roast dinner. Because my mum's mum's mum was English, and that tra- that's the so we've still got that English tradition, that Northern Hemisphere tradition. So now my mum will make roast meat, roast vegetables, we'll have a big roast dinner. And then on Christmas Day, we fire up the barbecue and it's all barbecues and salads and some seafood. and, and, and We don't it's... throw shrimp on the barbie, in case you're wondering. Throw a shrimp on the barbie, bait. No, no, I eat them not cooked, you know, boiled or, or, or poached or whatever, but not. Yeah. But they're not shrimp, right? No, they're prawns. They're, they're prawns. prawns. Mate, they're bloody prawns, please. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we do Christmas Day. We don't do Christmas Eve. Mm. Are you going to do anything on Christmas Eve? No, we don't do anything. Nothing. We've never done Why, anything you don't Christmas celebrate Eve. Anything? You go and you go do anything? No. Like look at Christmas lights or anything? No, we never did anything for Christmas Eve. Yeah. That's interesting. Isn't it? I've yeah. now learnt that a lot of people do do things for Christmas yeah, Eve. Because we have, we have the dinner, right? And we have like crackers. You pull the crackers. Oh, and we do that the... Christmas Day. Yeah, oh, we, do it Christ- we do it Christmas Day and Christmas Eve. Oh, you hog. Yeah, we get them. All. We, <laughs> we get 12 in a box and there's only five of us. Yeah, so you do it twice. Yeah, yeah, got, yeah, got okay. to use them all up. Yeah. No, we do Christmas lunch and mum makes the most amazing food. She's an mm. amazing cook. Well, I think we can say that that is a common Christmas tradition is food. Yeah, that yeah. sort of brings us all together. No matter where you are around the world, if you're having Chrissy, you're having the food. That's right. Yeah, we have. We don't do barbecue. We do roast. So often it will be roast. So you do pork. roast on the day. On the so day. So you do what I do on the night on the day. Yeah. And it's still like a very sort of Northern Hemisphere tradition, eating a big roast meal. You know mm. what I mean? I think. Well, my, my parents are. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting. I've never thought of it that way. But yeah, mum will often roast so maybe three types of meat. Yeah, we so, get two, two yeah, or three. Yeah, so we'll have either lamb, pork, or chicken. Yeah, pork and chicken usually. Yeah. No lamb. Usually not lamb. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I love lamb. It's my mm. favourite. Do lamb all the time. Mm. 
Yeah, so we would do that. We do presents in the morning. And so now the brothers oh, will yeah, come over. Oh, yeah, the prezzies. Yeah, you, know, you can't forget we do, the presents. We do the tree, have the tree up. Do you, when do you pre- do presents? Christmas morning, before anything. That's before breakfast. That's yeah. like, ding, wake up, Christmas presents. Yeah, yeah. now that we're You're adults. You're in your pajamas. Yeah. yeah, now that we're adults, we don't quite do it in the morning anymore. Mm. But we did. And I, I, me being the youngest was always the most excited. So I'd try and wake my brothers up. And they oh, would yeah. never, ever want to get up because they're older than me. And they were just like, eh, whatever. I was like, no, Santa has come. Oh, now, boy. Oh, something that we didn't cover. <laughs> Old Santa Claus, eh? Yeah, is mm. that uh, what kind of things people leave out for Santa? Well, well, he's, he's a busy bloke. You know, mm. he's got to visit billions of people and needs a little snack. Because I know some people, they put out a glass of beer. Yeah, it's is really that common. You, is that what you would do? It was more likely milk, but then I yeah. think at certain times it was beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, well, because we look. I don't know. Let's we're just going to move into the adults only portion here because we know Santa Claus is mum and dad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably whatever dad wanted. What? Dad I, probably wanted I, a glass of beer. I never knew that. I was yeah. <laughs> I are you Santa, are you Santa's, are you telling me that you Santa is mum and dad? <laughs> no. Look, I'll I'll admit something. I was I was a late comer. I that I I went on for ages. Really? It's actually a real sticking point in my development as a person. I think when I found out that Sandy wasn't real. Oh, oh I do actually, you remember that? You remember? I actually was one of those kids that was super switched on really early. Not me, and, mate. Oh. I was. They had me going to. I want to. You, I want to know. How old were you when you found? Oh, out? I was oh. young because I remember being in primary school and I remember saying to mum. I know Santa's not real, right? Oh, and no. and she said, as long as you don't tell anybody else. Oh. And so that tells me that I must have been young enough that everyone else was still believing at that point. So I don't exactly How old know. Do you think? I don't know. I would I... probably say <laughs> I'd probably say I'll like admit mine eight, say. maybe. Uh, I was at least twelve. <laughs> Because I refused to. Because I had the, obviously kids at school going, oh, you know, Santa's not real, and I'm like. <laughs> Idiots. Because <laughs> I was I was enchanted, as a child, I was enchanted by Santa. Santa Claus was actually my biggest hero. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, can you believe this? There is a magical man with infinite magical powers. Because and- he's actually really fat and he gets down a chimney. Oh, so yeah, that's pretty or, magical. He gets his magic any way he can. He's got infinite magical powers. What does he do with them? He decides to give presents to the children of the world. I'm like... When I grow up, I want to be like Santa Claus. <laughs> and I was really into him. I thought it was fantastic. He's a ma- like I'm like, magical man. This is amazing. And then, as you know, fate would have it, one day I'm mucking around, it's like December, and I was in mum and dad's room, and I look under the bed, and I was like, on the ground, you know, mucking Oh, around. no, this is and, how you found out? And I saw a box with a mini pool table. So there's a little bit, like it was a box, like it was, you know, the toy box, a mini pool table. I went... I wonder why mum and dad have got a mini pool table under their bed. And then I sort of went, hmm. So you're nearly at high school age right now. Yes. <laughs> Michelle, yes. <laughs> that's how That's how strongly I believe. I was just so overwhelmed by this magical person who did these amazing things. I couldn't believe it. Because uh, why would mum and dad lie to me? Never. But then I saw that and I was like, that's odd. I'm not going to... And there's something in my little... Kid's brain went, I'm not going to say anything about that. I'm just going to let that go. And it sat, it ruminated in the back of my head as Christmas came up. And then on Christmas Day, the only thing I wanted not to happen <gasps> was to open up. And see it. And see that mini pool table. And then I went, shh, shh, And I'm like, oh, this box looks lit. And I'm like, open up. And there was the mini pool table. And it said from Santa? Of course it said from Santa. Oh, no. I'll tell you something. When we do presents, we still says from Santa. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll go, oh, Santa's so nice. <laughs> um, but obviously we not. Yeah, that's when I went, oh. And I fell, my little heart, my little, my little child's heart, just broke in half, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm, from then on, we sort of went, oh, yeah, we know Santa's not real. And I was just like, hmm. Because I was still cracking on with the Easter bunny. I'm like, do you know there's a magical rabbit? <laughs> Leaves chocolates. This is incredible. Life is amazing. How good is amazing? Tooth fairy? Of course. <laughs> it's a magical fairy that gives you money for your teeth. Looking back on that's quite creepy. but um, It's really creepy. Yeah. 
I was happy though that my teeth would disappear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you'd get them out. Yeah. yeah, I never wanted them again. Mm. But yeah, yeah, the loss of um, Santa Claus is why. That's why nowadays I lo- I love Christmas. I love celebrating Christmas. I love getting the tree. I love doing it all and and just yeah, really. I've really come back to Christmas. I sort of abandoned it for a while. Oh, I did too. I became mm. a bit of a Grinch for a while. When I Grinched up. I'm like, Christmas, bah, humbug, you know? Yeah, I kind of did too. But now I love it to the point that I even have my toilet decorated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gentle listeners, uh, I've, I've come to with you every step to record the Christmas special. I'm quite honoured to be here for the Christmas special. And I just, I just excuse myself to use the lavatory and I go in there to the restroom and the toilet has got a Santa Claus face on it. <laughs> I bought it a few years ago. It's a miracle. It's a Christmas I miracle. saw it somewhere on eBay and just was like, I need this. I love it. I actually haven't used it for the past few years because... I'm so glad it was there. It's actually made my day. I will probably take a photo and put it on my Instagram. Put, put it on. I'm, pu- I'm putting it on my Instagram. Are you kidding me? Like you didn't say anything. I'm saying I'm just going to the toilet, and you're like, okay. And I walked in and went, oh my god! And you're just laughing in the other room. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you know what I'm excited yeah, I about? Waiting. I'm excited about Santa toilet. I was, I was waiting for the reaction. I wasn't sure what I was gonna get. I love it. I want one now. I'm gonna get on that eBay as soon as I get home. Now, I did spend a Christmas in the U.S. with friends, and that was really special. What do they do in the States? Is this, it was, it's kind of like here in Australia, but it's obviously it's it's different climate. It um, is. Different weather, obviously. Let's it is. Climate. Yeah. I personally think, I don't know, I think it's just my family that doesn't have many traditions. Mm. Yeah, we yeah, we just got to eat the food on a certain day. Yeah, we just we eat do. a lot. It, open the presents in the Open morning. the presents and eat a lot. That's yeah, really yeah. our Christmas. There's a, there's a tree and we decorate the tree. Yeah, we're not religious, so we don't go to church. Us neither. We, we weren't either. Yeah. yeah. And so in the US, I find that they've got a lot of traditions mm. and I really enjoyed them. We, I was staying with friends that I met. I was in Iowa in the Midwest and I did two Christmases with them. So one was at one side of the family. Right, this is in Iowa. Yeah, yeah, so they're a couple. So mm. one was with the wife and one was with the husband's mm. family. And it was really lovely to be able to see also their different traditions that they mm, had. Two different Within the families. different families. Yeah, yeah. So one is out in the country, mm. in the real cornfields of Iowa. Right, yeah. Yeah, and it, oh, that damn. was on Christmas Day. No, sorry, I just lied. It was not on Christmas Day. Oh, it was the week before. So, so leading up to Christmas. Leading yeah. up to Christmas. So it was all very close to Christmas. And their family's huge. Okay. And so there were so many people there. Because no, I've got quite a small family. Me too. So it's, you know, just the five of us. Yeah, and... it's quite little with my family too. And this family was massive. So I'm the person that yeah, doesn't know be, anyone. That, that'd be overwhelming. Like, yeah. whoa, everyone's rel- you know, yeah. cousins and aunties so and uncles. Meeting everybody and they exchange gifts, which was lovely. And they even bought me a gift and I was shocked and I loved it. Oh, it was lovely. Yeah. It was really special. And then we went over. The Christmas spirit, I believe they call it. Oh, they really yeah. do. And then on Christmas Day, we woke up. And actually, no, sorry, Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. They do gifts on Christmas Eve. I've heard this. Some people go, you know, we op- you know, Christmas Eve, and you open up the presents. You're like, what? I know. Sacrilege. But then I'm like, Santa hasn't been. Yeah, he hasn't been. He comes in the night time. Yeah, but that's not Santa's present you open Christmas well, Eve. Oh, family presents. Family Get presents. Family gifts, okay. Yeah, but Santa's come overnight, and then the kids open that in the morning. Yeah, right here. Yeah, and my friends even made me a beautiful stocking. Mm, good. I saw it hanging up. You've got yeah, it hanging I've your, got it in hanging your, in up. I put it up every year. And I love it because we don't do stockings. Yeah, well, we never we didn't do them as well. Well, no, as kids, yeah. I think again, I think it's a northern We'd, hemisphere thing because we didn't it, have a chimney to hang them on. <laughs> we don't have fireplaces. Where am I going to hang this stocking? We don't, really, we don't have a chimney. We don't really need fireplaces mm. that much, so most places don't have well, them. I, I grew up in Queensland, which is in northern Australia, so it's quite hot. So yeah, no fireplaces. No. No. So, yeah, and then in the morning it was it was filled. And I loved it. I loved Bingo. I felt like a kid again. Yeah. And I think 
that's where my love of Christmas came back. Yeah. Was being in the US and seeing okay, the way they yeah. do it. Before that, I was really, my dad was so upset that I was going to be away for Christmas. I was like, nah, what's the big deal? Mm. Where I was over there and I was like, oh, this is so good. I wish my family could be here and join in. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. They also, then for Christmas lunch, we went over to my friend's father's place and his family was there and the table was set up and everyone had name tags. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so American. Oh, I and love I it. Had, I love it. I had my own name tag made up, which I still have. <laughs> oh, that's great. I had my own. He made me. It was like a, a tree ornament. Mm. And it had my Your name own on ornament. It. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like a little, like a little gift, like a little, it present, was. A little tree ornament present. Oh, it was so special. And then they have another tradition, mm. which they do an ornament exchange. Okay. So it's a game that they play. Everyone buys. So like Chris Kringle or something. You get like, a, mm. do you get pull a name out of a hat? Or no, you, no, you... no. So everyone buys a tree ornament. It can be wild. Like a it can warble be warble or a little horse or whatever. No, normally they're quite weird. Okay. They in the US they've got all different kinds. I like that. Mm-hmm. So you can buy really weird ones. Mm-hmm. And they got one for me so I could participate. Yeah. And I was watching. I, I don't really know what's going to happen here. But what happens? You wrap them. You wrap and you up put the them in. Yeah. yeah. You put them in the middle. And then you do pull out a number and whoever okay, goes there you go. first. Okay, there's, there's like a draw, yeah. Yeah, okay. and I, like it's got a name. I can't think of the name. Mm. And everyone's it's kind of like listening our, going, yeah. that's this, that's this. It's I like our Secret of... Santa or Chris Kringle almost kind of. Yeah, but then the first person gets to pick an ornament and they open it up. Mm. And then as you keep going on, you can steal other ones. Oh, yeah. Or yeah, you yeah, can yeah, open yeah. up one. So if someone likes one that's going around that looks amazing... They can steal it. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. it was so good. That's I, awesome. We laughed so hard yeah, playing this like, game. I want that one. Yeah. yeah. So when I came home, the following... The <laughs> There's following... like an element of greed involved, like, but, but it's fun. I get it. I like that. Yeah. I like that. It was a it's lot a of fun. fun. yeah. Because it's only an ornament. It's yeah, nothing yeah, that's yeah, expensive, yeah, 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 which yeah, I think like... you can get some expensive ones. Of course. But yeah, no Yeah. Doubt. And there were some really cool ones. I The one I got, I still have, and it's still on my tree today. Mm-hmm. I still, oh, really? Yeah. Good. I'll have to have a look. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I still have it on my tree. And the year after, I went online and it took me ages, but I found an Australian one. Okay. And I sent yeah, them like over. A, like an Aussie one. ornament. Yeah, an yeah, Aussie yeah. one. I can't remember. They'll remember because I don't know who ended up winning it. But they Like a little tiny esky full of beers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. That would have been cool. Yeah. It was either like a koala on a surfboard. <laughs> Oh, I love that rubbish. It was something like that. I love koalas on surfboards. I think that stuff is hilarious. Like, oh, it's a koala on a surfboard. There's nothing more Australian than that. Like it's a kangaroo wearing a hat with corks. It's great. I love that stuff. Yeah, so I ended up sending that so I could participate, and that was a lot of fun. That's great. That's very nice. Yeah, Yeah, I love love those things. inclusivity of if that's a word um inclusiveness of christmas yeah where it's like you know once a year you get to be a good person and go hey let's invite someone in just join us join our family be part of our family come and join us yeah and that's what they did to me they totally took me in and i didn't i thought i was going to feel really homesick Mm. i'd been away for a birthday before and i got really homesick on my birthday Mm. Other times I have not because I partied in Mallorca and I forgot about home. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mallorca can make you forget about home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I thought I was going to get really homesick. And I know I, I FaceTimed back yeah. home mm-hmm. when it was Australian lunchtime. So when my family was doing the big roast lunch mm. and I got them to sit the laptop on the table. So I felt like I was part of it. And they just ignored me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah. Merry Christmas. And then they were all just talking with each other and I was like, okay, so I guess you don't miss me that much and I'll talk to you when I get home. So I'll see you soon. <laughs> You're like just a computer in the corner. Yeah, You're... totally. Yeah. So I didn't really feel that homesick, but mm. because my friends took me in and I got to experience their traditions, mm. I think that makes a massive difference. If I yeah. was to be by myself somewhere, I can imagine it being quite lonely. So my suggestion is try and find someone to go hang out with. People will invite I you. I guarantee. 
tea at like everywhere you go, someone, if you're out and about, you'll find people. Those of you who travel, you know, as well as anyone that you just meet people. And I have no doubt anywhere you go, if you celebrate Christmas, anywhere in the world, you're going to find other people who are celebrating Christmas or, or something else at that time of year. And you'll, you'll find them. And it's just that, like I was saying that time of year, that people just open their hearts and, and invite you in. So I've never been in the situation. I've never been alone at Christmas, but I don't think so. No, I've never been alone at Christmas. But yeah, I, I just know that if I was out and about in another place, another part of the world, that I'd just go and find someone. So you were in Hong Kong for Christmas? Yeah. Did well, you the do last it? episode I was on, um, With You Every Step, because I'm a double stepper now, two steps. Yeah, I was talking about living in Hong Kong and I did spend Christmas in Hong Kong and it was fantastic. Did you do a Christmas lunch? What did we do? Yeah, we did. We just, we stayed at home. We just made our own lunch. Yeah, we got all this lovely stuff because things kind of closed down on Christmas Day. They still do that. Oh, not everything because they're still, you know, like... 7-Eleven? 7-Eleven will be, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. If you, listen, you, if you haven't listened to the episode, you need to go listen to it. Tro- Troy will tell you all about 7-Eleven in Hong Kong. Dude, 7-Eleven party's going on. <laughs> Pub crawls. Yeah, 7-Eleven <laughs> crawls. Yeah, but we decorated our apartment and probably mentioned this in the previous episode, but Hong Kong goes nuts for it. They love, because there's a certain number of people there who celebrate Christmas. There's, you know, Christians and Catholics and what have you, but they just love the, the Christmasness of Christmas. Like if you, you're, on, you're on the ferry, on the Star Ferry or any of the ferries on Victoria Harbour, all the, a lot of the buildings on Hong Kong Island who line Victoria Harbour are just all lit up with Christmas lights. Like I'm talking like, you know, 50 or 60 story tall Santa Clauses and Christmas decorations. And, oh, it's amazing that the whole city lights up and they, they really get into the, the Christmasness of Christmas. When I went to Hong Kong and I, and I lived there and I, and I had Christmas there, I think that was one of the things that actually really reinstilled Christmas into me mm. was the Christmasness. It's Christmas. Get happy. Have fun. Enjoy it. You know, yeah. enjoy the kitschness. Enjoy the, you know, the, the lights and the, you know, the, the fun and all the things that you can do and the food and the friends and you can hang out and enjoy it. I, I think it might have been Hong Kong that gave me my Christmas back. Yeah. After. A, so that's both of us that found it again after traveling after and being traveling. So, yeah. 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 So being overseas yeah. and. And watching the Hong Kong culture just embrace the the fun and joy and excitement of Christmas, mm. I was sort of went, yeah, it is, it is fun, it is exciting, it yeah. is like. I, I, I even got back into Christmas carols. I'm like, yeah, Christmas carols. I'll put them on. <laughs> I'll get my Spotify on and crack on the carols. Buble will come up. Uh, speaking of traditions. Christmas traditions. We yeah. Have. Well, we've had our own traditions. You know, we've had we? our own traditions, but we've also... We still have them. We keep them. Yeah, we've also uh, found some interesting ones. I would probably say, though, Australians probably don't have as many traditions as other countries. No, we probably have little odd traditions, like probably family. Personal family personal ones. Personal family traditions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this new tradition amongst some friends of mine, I've been doing it three years now, called Crapmas. So Crapmas is you get together, you're having a Christmas party... But you, <laughs> I love, I love the ridiculousness of it. Is you try and source the most awful Christmas present. Do you have a budget? Yeah, you got like ten bucks, you know, ten maybe twenty bucks, not even. And you source something that's completely useless or awful or dumb, and you wrap it up and you put it all in the middle, and everyone picks one out. And if you don't like it, you can give it to someone else or if you want someone else's you can steal theirs oh yeah like same that. kind of thing yeah so it's quite kind of fun and you go christmas rah, rah, rah. yeah it's just a nice thing it's funny it's weird new a new tradition a, a new, new tra- a new tradition yeah, yeah. a troy one yeah a troy edition a troy edition mm. i like that i've just coined that uh, copyright thank you <laughs> me being croatian I've actually never spent a Christmas in Croatia. Never had a Croatian Christmas? No, I'd love to though. Yeah. And that was dad's dream actually oh, to really, go really. with the family, mm. all of us, and take us over to his sister's and have a white Christmas. Mm. I forgot to mention it did snow on Christmas Day when I was in Iowa. There you go. It was amazing. Oh, that I would blow loved my mind. It. Yeah, it was so good. It was my Christmas wish and I got it. Mm. So that would be our wish as a family to be able to do that. Dad's gone now, so we won't be able to. Mm. And I would have loved to. White Christmas in Australia doesn't exist. Snow way. No, snow way at all. <laughs> nice. I like it. Now, we did find, though, 
that <laughs> they do some very interesting things. We've, uh, we've know... done a little research here. Yeah. We're not just we're not just bumbling around here. No. We'd like to share a few of these uh, Christmas traditions. So, like we said, if you find yourself somewhere around the world and you're like, what are we, we going to do for Christmas? What do they do there? We're going to help you out here. So we found in Croatia, and I'm going to give a bit of a verbatim here. So Croatia, on, on St. Nicholas's Eve, which is the 5th of December. Yeah, the 5th of December. So this is way this before is way Christmas. way before Christmas. This is, you know, the month before Christmas. Twenty day, This is 20 days yeah. before Christmas. Yeah, and they are very religious over there. So this really? is, yeah. Yeah. So on the 5th of December, which is St. Nicholas's Eve, children clean their shoes or their boots and they leave them on the window. Now they hope that St. Nicholas, old, old Santa, will leave them chocolates and small presents inside their boots. If children have been naughty, however, this is what I like. First of all, though, leaving food inside shoes, I don't like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all the time. Oh, what? Yeah, Totally. I don't know about putting um, candy into shoes, like especially. Like, oh, yeah, chocolate maybe... feels really good when you put your feet Ooh, in it. Ooh, yeah, you'd be worried <laughs> about that. Like maybe if it's like a decorative shoe, you're like yeah, it's not a shoe that I wear. You put as much chocolate in that. But if it's a shoe that I wear, I'm not eating the chocolate. Well, I'm pretty sure these are shoes they wear, right? I think that's what it is. Well, they clean yeah. up their own shoes. They clean up their boots, and, and then they want a magical man to put food in them. So they put the boots out there. They're hoping that Saint Nicholas is going to put chocolates inside their shoes or their boots. But however, as I was saying, if children have been naughty. A bloke called Krampus. Oh, I like that. Some other mythical creature called Krampus, which is a big monster with horns who sometimes travels with St. Nick, leaves them golden twigs to remind them to behave. So golden twigs are branches? I assume, yeah, yeah. Golden I, though, golden yeah, branches. I'm actually leaning towards the golden twigs as opposed to the <laughs> shoe chocolate. But... <laughs> Again, Chocolate it's in the be... shoes or golden branches. See, we're thinking as Aussies, which mm. means it would melt because it's summer. But it's yeah. not summer there. Yeah. It's winter and it's freezing. So they would have So you melt. want chocolate in that shoe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Krampus, the monster, he's leaving golden twigs. Maybe the golden twigs, you just like, you get that. It's the traditional, like, you see a golden twig, you're like, oh, oh big trouble. Mm. Um, what else have we got in Croatia? Christmas trees are very popular and are normally decorated on Christmas Eve, but some people put them up and decorate them on St. Nicholas Day, which yep, is the 5th. No, 6th. Oh, 6th. Yeah. yeah. In Croatia, they're traditionally decorated with ornaments in the shapes of fruits. They, use, they used to be real fruits or preserved candied fruits that were sometimes covered in gold. A lot of gold mm. going on over there. Gold fruit. Ooh, I do not have any fruit on my tree. No, not a, I don't have a speck of it on my tree either. There's an old Croatian tradition that young men gave their girlfriends a decorated apple at Christmas. <laughs> oh, I heck? would love me an apple at Christmas. A, a decorated apple? How do you? <laughs> how the heck do you decorate an apple? I don't know, but I'd like to see it. Yeah. If anyone wants to give me a decorated apple at Christmas, yeah. I will accept it. That means that means they're your not boyfriend. a rotten one. They're your boyfriend then, because <laughs> that's the way. Oh, well, I am yeah. looking. So. Well, hello. <laughs> say no more, gentle <laughs> listeners, if you are interested. <laughs> so yeah, Croatia is lovely. They've they've got those those. I think a few cultures have the the Saint Nicholas and the Krampus. Or yeah, the, or from the, what we could see, it's very European. You know, the good guy and the bad guy that that's there that. You know, that if you're good, you get the thing. But if yeah. you're bad, you get the bad thing. Yeah. yeah, I know that my nephew's got a few potatoes. Potatoes? Yeah, in, in place of presents. What does that my mean? My sister-in-law does that. So if he's been naughty, he gets potatoes instead of a present. <laughs> <laughs> and so it comes... He gets potatoes. <laughs> I'd be like, quite, I'd be like, oh, that's quite good. I can make chips out of that. Yeah, well, he didn't think so because he would say to us, Santa gave me potatoes. So not coal, because we often hear that, yeah. you, know, you get coal in yeah. your stocking. Oh, well, coal's whatever. not easy to get, no. and it's not cheap. <laughs> potatoes are easy. So he got potatoes from Santa. Wow. Yeah, and I was like, how many did you get? He's like, three. That was three presents I missed out on. It worked. Wow, he got three potatoes. Yeah, he got presents as well, but, but he also but got potatoes. He could have got so three his, more presents. In his mind, he, he missed got... out on some three things that he really wanted. But he got spuds instead yeah speaking of potatoes let's talk about if we can my heritage yes in ireland and you think i, I drew that in there i connected the potatoes there. that's not good <laughs> i've just used that as a lovely link to my heritage so my heritage is irish so we've just been to croatia let's let's nip over to ireland they've got some interesting traditions over there see i don't think that potato gig would work in ireland <laughs> i reckon if they open up a bit I've got here the present. It's a potato. It's amazing. 
I'm very lucky. And a potato for Christmas. And more potatoes. Perhaps get a potato if you've been very good in Ireland. I don't know if that's true. That's that's not a real. Tradition. I can't imagine any kid being happy with potatoes. <laughs> not these days. <laughs> no. Maybe, maybe, it's my iPad. Ma- maybe during the potato famine, they were like, "Wow, this would be amazing." Right, I love potatoes. Excellent. So in Ireland, here's the, I, I I haven't spent Christmas in Ireland. A very good friend of mine has just, with his wife, who's Irish, has gone back to Ireland right a few days ago, and they're going to Ireland to have an Irish Christmas, and he's so excited because it's all about food and it's going to be snowing and all that jazz as well. All about food. We're all, all about the, the food. food. Yeah, Christmas yeah, and food. Yeah. Potatoes. We've done our research and we found that out in Ireland, and they've got some old traditions that they that they still do here and there, maybe. We would like to know if anyone still does these yeah. traditions. Hit if us you up. do, please write to me. I want to know if this still happens. Yeah, yeah. Let me know if you, if you're in Croatia and you're afraid of Krampus. <laughs> you let me know. You let me know if you've got a couple of golden twigs. I also want to know if you've given someone a decorated apple on Christmas. Yeah, get the, maybe like, oh, I'm sweet on that girl over there. I'm going to decorate this apple. Yeah, I want to see pictures. Tag me on your Instagram if you've if you've got a picture of a decorated apple. Yeah, hit us up about that. And so in Ireland, let me know if you're, if you're celebrating the Wren's Boys Procession. So in Ireland, and it's an old tradition, this is the Wren's Boys Procession. So you might find yourself in Ireland Christmas and, and swept up in the Wren's Boys Procession that takes place on St. Stephen's Day, which is Boxing, what we call Boxing Day over here, the day after Christmas. Christmas 26. 26. So it goes back to ancient times when they would kill a wren, so a little bird, they'd kill a wren, and they'd carry it around in a holly bush and they'd walk up and down the street. So now if they do it these days, they don't kill any wrens, which I'm, I'm quite fond of. That's a good idea. So um, what happens is young men and women, people dress up in homemade costumes. I love homemade costumes. <laughs> I love homemade costumes. And go from house to house carrying a long pole with a holly bush tied to the top and singing a rhyme about the wren bird. Can you sing the rhyme? Please I'll, sing I'll, the rhyme. I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. And sometimes they'll even be accompanied by violins and accordions and harmonicas and horns, etc. Okay. And the rhyme um, that often goes with it is a bit like this. <clears throat> I would do the harmonica with my hands if I could, but I can't, so I won't. So go. There we go. That's a... <laughs> that did not sound like what is that it... a harmonica sound? <laughs> did you just have chili for dinner? <laughs> It's out of tune, I think. So the, the wren rhyme. So, you, so you got your, you got your dead wren. You've wrapped it up in a holly bush. You've chucked it on the top of a stick. You've got your homemade costumes on. And you're walking down the street going, The wren, the wren, the king of the birds, on St. Stephen's Day was caught in the furs. Now, I'm, now I'm professionally tone deaf, so <laughs> that's how good that is. The wren, the wren, the king of the birds, on St. Stephen's Day was caught in the furs. That's as good. That's, that's the only <laughs> words to the song. It's quite simple to learn and remember. So there you go. Yeah. Also, on the sixth of January, so after Chrissy in Ireland, they've got the Feast of the Epiphany. I love that. They've... Now we learned a bit about this Epiphany. There was a lot of people that really followed this. I've people, never heard people of are, it. People are having great epiphanies. <laughs> It's January the 6th. Yeah, so I, I assume it's, it's a religious-related thing. I, Some, yeah. Someone write in and tell us. We don't know. We didn't research that far into it, please. <laughs> I just love that there's the Feast of the Epiphany on the 6th of January, celebrated in a few towns in Ireland, called Noleg Namabin, or Women's Christmas. I like this. Women's Christmas. So traditionally, the women got the day off of their housework. <laughs> Well, be right. You can have the day after housework, all right? You get one day, one day a year. Get off the housework, all right? Now go down. And what they do <laughs> is traditionally they get the day after housework, and then the men have to do the housework and the cooking. How crazy is that? That's out of control. So January sixth, all the, 6th. the men in Ireland go fishing. Yeah, that's it. No, they're no, they're not. They're chained to the stove. They're cooking and cleaning. <laughs> And the women then go meet each and meet each other in their each other's homes, and they sew and chat. Yeah. Sewing does not sound like a day off. Yeah, and they've done. A, then they sit and chat and gossip because oh, women just gossip. Gosh, this sounds yeah. like it's definitely Victorian so, era. So yeah, that's what's going on. So you find yourself in Ireland, you know, over the Christmas or festive season. You know, you you got your wren on a stick and you're singing songs, and then the women get the day off on the sixth. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a great tradition. Yeah. Women's Christmas. Women's Christmas. There's, I like there's it. everybody's Christmas and then the women get their own Christmas, all right? You on the 6th. On the 6th. It's after Christmas. Of Jan. After In the, the following year. Just take the Christmas off. After you've done all the hard work. Yeah, yeah. That's you when, just that's get when one day off. The women come back and there's 
What's for dinner? Pizza. Now, we did learn something very interesting about Sweden. Okay, sweet. Christmas in Sweden. Yeah. I want to go. I know. So I've not, been, I've not been, but I want to go. Yeah. I don't know if I do. <laughs> oh, come on. What's, <laughs> what about the tradition? Tradition's tradition the winner. It is. It is. An interesting tradition, but I don't know if I need to fly to Sweden for it. <laughs> you, so... pre- you don't, but, but, <laughs> but I think it'd be the, the joyous feeling that you get in Sweden when this tradition comes about. So this is Christmas Eve, and it is a very specific time. Time no. of the clock. Yeah, you know, time of the clock. There is a time. Yeah. There is an exact time At that this tradition occurs. p.m. No earlier, no later, 3 p.m. On the dot. Yep. On Christmas, is it Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, 3 p.m. on the dot yep. in Sweden. You yep. know what's going to happen. Yeah, because this has actually been a tradition since 1959. Boom. So anyone in Sweden, I'm sure you might know. I know I've got some listeners oh, over there. You know what's going You know what we're talking about. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it is Donald Duck. <laughs> Donald Duck is on at three o'clock on Christmas Eve in Sweden, guaranteed. Yep. Everyone stops and watches it. (laughs) So Christmas Eve at 3 p.m., you're not out doing Christmas shopping. No, 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 no. Oh, my word, no. No. You're glued to the TV. You are watching Donald. Watching old mate Donnie. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) That's what's on. So in 1959 and early 60s, Television started getting hot, right? So, well, we've got TVs. This is great. So in Sweden, in the early 60s, there was only two television channels and one of them at Christmas would only play Disney cartoons. So there became, now there is this tradition, you watch Donald Duck on at 3 p.m. I know, 3 p.m. Afternoon cartoons. You watch Donald Duck at 3 p.m. in Sweden for Christmas. And at least 40% of the population get together and have their traditional Donald Duck Christmas. <laughs> How good's that? It is cool. They've, take, I like they've it. taken the afternoon cartoons to the next level. They really like have. That. Absolutely. But I love that Donald Duck has become the patron of Christmas in Sweden. <laughs> It's not anything. Not that Mickey. I... Not Mickey Mouse. Forget Mickey. It's Donnie. It's old yeah, Donnie Duck. Yeah, I would never have picked it. Mm. I would never have guessed that if that was something I had to guess mm. that would be on at 3 p.m. on Christmas Eve. You have all the cartoons. It yeah. would never be Donald Duck. No. <laughs> like my Donald Duck impression. It's quite good. <laughs> yeah. It's great. That was that in the sixties. That's how he was talking like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was wishing everyone Merry Christmas. Oh yes. So Poland actually have a tradition that I kind of like. Oh, yeah? I like the fact what that are they doing in Poland? on the table, there needs to be 12 dishes. With food? With food. <laughs> not just empty <laughs> no, dishes. No, not empty dishes. We have 12 empty dishes. <laughs> you just Merry Christmas. Look at them. Mm. No, no, no. We, they have 12 dishes and they're meant to give you luck for the next 12, 12 months. months. Okay, yeah. Now, I've, now I'm starting to I get like involved. I like it. Yeah. The meal is traditionally meat-free. Mm-hmm. And this like is to that. remember the animals. Animals who were there around baby Jesus. Yes. So, and everyone must eat at least something from each dish. Right. Who's cooking them? I don't know. <laughs> See, there I wonder go. if it's 12 people. You're like, oh, no. Everyone has to bring a dish. Auntie Janine has brought the falafels again. <laughs> oh, we okay. have to eat them. The and gross. it also is a religious thing for Catholics that 12 dishes symbolize the Jesus' 12 disciples. Oh, magic number. Yeah, there 12. And it is the 12 days of Christmas, right? 12 days of Christmas, 12 disciples, 12 months. What? Speaking of food, let's go to Japan. <laughs> I love Japan. I haven't been to Japan, but now having read their Christmas about their Christmas traditions, I'm keen. <laughs> Making me uh, just lick my fingers while you're uh, yeah. oh, talking about it's it. It's a finger licking Christmas there. Um, <laughs> in that, it's all about fried chicken. So Christmas in Japan, it's all about fried chicken. Not just not just any fried chicken. We're talking about the Colonel here. We're talking Christmas Colonel. Santa K- Sanders. KFC. Yeah, it's all about KFC. So Christmas Day, the tradition in Japan is you get out and you have yourself a big old bucket of KFC chicken. <laughs> we are not sponsored by KFC. No, there this is no is sponsorship. This is a true tradition. It's the busiest time of the year for KFC restaurants in Japan. 
People can place their orders at the local fast food restaurant in advance. Um, there's an advertising campaign in KFC in 1974. So back in 74, they had a campaign. It was called Kentucky for Christmas, which was a huge, which was a hugely successful campaign and made KFC very popular. I think we need to get to your favourite tradition that you learnt about. This is out of control. This is possibly the greatest Christmas tradition on the planet. <laughs> And it's coming to us all the way from Spain, Catalonia, beautiful Catalonia. Hola. Look, it's you're traveling through Spain. It's Christmas. Beautiful you've... Spain. Oh, oh gorgeous. It's so beautiful. And you're having sangria. Oh, it's mid it's mid December. You're drinking that sangria. You found yourself in having Catalonia. Some tapas. And you think, geez, Christmas is coming. I'm gonna spend Christmas in Catalonia. What do we do here? Let us enlighten you. I'm going to read this because it's so good. You're going to create a little wooden character, okay, called Tio D. Nadal. Okay. Tio D. Nadal. I'm going to create him. Yeah. He's called the Christmas log. Christmas log. Now, Tio D. Nadal is made from a hollow log, so a small hollow log with stick legs. He's got a smile on his face and a red hat. Look this up on the internet. You can see pictures. Over Christmas, every evening between December the 8th and Christmas Eve, children feed the log character, this little log character, they feed him small treats with water and leave him under a blanket to sleep and keep him warm. Now, on Christmas Eve, that's where things get a little, uh, things get a little bizarre. The children are tasked with beating the log with sticks while singing traditional songs, okay, which, incru- <laughs> which include amazing lyrics such as <clears throat> poop log, Poop nuggets, hazelnuts, and mato cheese. If you don't poop well, I'll hit you with a stick. Poop log. (laughs) So you're belting this little wooden effigy with a stick, encouraging it to defecate. (laughs) This is a great tradition. This is the best tradition. So um, this leads me to believe that a lot of people get constipated. Maybe they're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> we have talked a lot about food. We have talked um, a lot about food. Now, after Tio D. Nadal is properly beaten and serenaded, the log magically poops out presents and candy. <laughs> <laughs> and after this, after this whole ordeal, this poor little tiny creature, this poor little thing you've created. After he's pooped out, magically pooped out presents and candy, he's then considered useless <laughs> and thrown in the fire for warmth. Bless you, Catalonia. Bless you and your most amazing Christmas tradition that I have ever heard of. And again, if anyone does this, please let us know. Oh. I want to see your pictures. Tag with you every step. We really want to see these actual pictures if anyone does it. I'm kind of guessing they Spain, might not. Spain, let us know about your poopy Christmas. <laughs> Pretty much anything we looked up to do with Christmas in Spain, it was all about poop. It's about logs making logs. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's a Christmas log that poops out presents and candy. Well, bless it. I, I, I'm laughing, but I think it's amazing. I think that's fantastic. I see a little fun at Christmas, a little cheekiness, I think, doesn't go astray. Not at all. No, and I yeah. think it's good. And the kids get involved and they sing poopy songs. Yeah, <laughs> I love the poop songs. <laughs> poop out long, do another poop. Yeah. Oh, I would amazing. like to hear it in their traditional yeah, language. Yeah, the traditional language. It probably sounds beautiful. It probably, it probably does probably sound gorgeous. lovely yeah, in yeah. Spanish. On another Spanish pooping side note, They've also got a small nativity character. I can't recall his name. I don't have it written down here. But they've got a little nativity character who, who sits in the corner and does a poo <laughs> behind baby Jesus. And you have to, and the, and the, and the game is you, you get this little pooping character and you hide him in your nativity, invite people over to find the little pooping man. It's fantastic. <laughs> Hold on, I think I do have some information about it here. I think you need to, yeah. to read it out. It's too um, good to not go into detail. So they've got... <laughs> I love it. Look it up. The picture is hilarious. I, I will probably post this. I will post this. It I encourage you to. to have a look at these little pooping characters. So it's all about poop in, in Spain at Christmas. So statuettes, and it's not just 
nativity characters, you know, the three wise men, maybe one of the wise men was like, ooh, that was a bit of a big meal, wasn't it? I'll go nip around behind the manger. Could be statuettes of well-known people or celebrities defecating a strong Christmas tradition in Catalonia, back in Catalonia. So dating back to the 18th century, as Catalonians hide these little characters in Christmas nativity scenes and invite friends to come and find them. The figurine... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the figurines symbolize fertilization. There you go. Good growth. Yeah, that's it. Nutrients. A lot of nutrients in poop. Hope and prosperity. So it represents fertilization, hope and prosperity for the coming year. It could be regular to be for, for it to be people or famous people, celebrities or politicians pooping behind the baby Jesus <laughs> in the nativity. Oh, that's it. End of story. I'm going to Catalonia for Christmas. That's my next holiday destination for Christmas is Catalonia, and it's going to be about poop. <laughs> I love that. I love it so much. It's going hope... to be the best crappy Christmas I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this episode. My abs are sore from laughing so hard. <laughs> oh, I'm I love Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I hope... You have a great time wherever you are around the world. If you're with family, if you're with friends, if you're with strangers, I'm sure they'll take you in. Yeah. Go to the local pub. Go to the go on Facebook groups. I'm sure there would be Christmas Facebook groups wherever you are. If you're in a certain country and you're not sure if you know anyone, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a group you can go and meet somebody. Go hang out. It's the time to really go and try a new tradition. Mm. Don't be afraid to talk about poop at Christmas because it's very popular in Spain. (laughs) Hey, after this podcast airs, they might get a whole lot of people going there for Christmas. Yeah, I would. (laughs) Okay, we wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Have a safe and happy Christmas with everybody. And Troy and I are going to do a cheers for you all. Merry Christmas. Cheers. Have a rocking new year as well. Thanks for joining us on With, with you, you Every Step. Step. Oh, did we even practice that? That was amazing. <laughs> we didn't. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Thanks for listening to With You Every Step, hosted by Michelle Lee. We do hope you enjoyed listening. And if you did, make sure you tell everybody. If you didn't, nobody likes a Debbie Downer. Please subscribe to get up to date with our latest releases and give us a thumbs up on our social media at With You Every Step. We love to hear from you. If you have any questions or inquiries, head to the Contact Us page at our website, michellelee.com. That's also where you'll find all our blogs mentioned in the podcast. We love to hear from you and if we have inspired you to travel. Thanks for listening. Love life and adventure on.